Is uh, on the hour exams. If you have questions about the grading or any problem, check with me afterwards. Before that, though, I do want to go over um, the uh, problem that you're working with for your lab this week. It's a rate of reaction problem. It's a cool experiment. It's one of my favorite experiments uh, to do. But the write-up for it is one of the most convoluted. Okay, the, the lab manual in general is not easy to read, uh, but this particular one kind of sets a standard for almost incomprehensible. So let me uh, kind of simplify it a little bit, and uh, once you see this, it's more like the stuff we've already covered in class. The overall reaction that you're looking at, S2O8, It's two things. Mainly, it's just like the problem on the hour exam, where first step is what is the uh, rate law for the reaction. So it's going to be K um, X2O8 2 minus to some exponent, and then I minus to some other exponent. Now, one of the things that makes this a cool experiment is it turns it almost into a magic show where you mix two things together and nothing happens, nothing happens. Two minutes later, all of a sudden it goes from clear to like dark purple. Um, so, and, and that gives you a uh, pretty uh, precise way to measure uh, something related to the reaction kinetics. But it really messes up compared to looking at the concentration of this change. So there's some substitutions, and this is all uh, from page uh, 128, uh, where you get to uh, rate of the reaction. So what I'm looking for is to set up the table of S2O8 minus I minus N rate. And for your first three experiments, just put in some numbers there so you can get the rate law. So what do you put in here? That's what I'm trying to get to here. So page 128, you do a bunch of substitutions and you wind up with rate equals one half of the uh, initial S2O8, S2O3, 2 minus, divided by the time change. Now, um, when you have the information in the book. What, one thing is that uh, the sodium iodide, you, you can't have uh, bottles of chemicals of ions. Uh, ions don't exist by themselves. What you have is uh, sodium iodide. So um, it's sort of like the colligative property uh, problem. Add it to water and you can get the sodium ion and the iodide. So for every um, mole per liter of sodium iodide you have in solution, it gives you one iodide. So you have a stock solution of 0 0.20 moles per liter of NI, NAI, which means you have 0 0.20 moles per liter of I minus in your stock solution. So that's the stuff that was on the uh, cart that you, you took over to your bench and then you made up uh, your, your uh, test tubes with. Now, when you made up the test tubes, you were following the amounts here. So uh, you had uh, two milliliters of sodium iodide, two of sodium chloride, two of Na2SO3, one of starch, two of uh, A2SO4, 
And then finally, you added two milliliters of K2S2OA. Uh, so your total uh, milliliters for all of these first three reactions would be 11. And I'm looking at, the, uh, at this in particular, and I'm looking at the very first one, what's going to go in here. So uh, to make up this, what it has in this table is you had two milliliters. So that's a dilution factor. At full strength, it's 0.2 per liter, but when the reaction was going, it was two milliliters of this in a total of uh, 11. Okay, and that gives you uh, 0.036 moles. Uh, on the second one, for the eye, you also had um, two milliliters, so 0.036 here. And on the third one, you had four milliliters. So the, the last one, so it was two again, and on the last one, it was four in a total of 11. Uh, so that would be the diluted concentration here is going to be two times this or four elevenths of the original. Now, uh, S208, uh, you do the same thing. So you're uh, looking at uh, 0.2 moles per liter of the K2 S208. starting with a 0.20 molar solution here, and it, the numbers work out the same, and the first one you do, you have um, two milliliters of the K2S2O8, so after you dilute it, you can have uh, 0.036. The second one is the one you use four milliliters of, and then on the third one you go back to just two milliliters. Okay, now, the rates. Um, you get the S203, um, initial S203. This is now from uh, Na2 S203. And you're doing the same logic as over here. So this time the S203 from the Na2 S203, originally a 0.01 uh, molar solution. And for all three of those, uh, it's going to be the same amount. So uh, you, you get the same amount. and. This is uh, uh, 9.1 times 10 to the negative 4 divided by delta t, and that's going to be moles per liter per second. So it's the same thing uh, for each of these. Yeah, except you're going to have a different delta t. This is your time lapse in seconds for each of your three first reactions. So typically, something like 60 seconds here, no, 120 seconds here, 60 seconds here, 60 seconds here. So that will mean the rate for these two will be about double what this one is. 
Question? A uh, couple. Right. Yeah. Where did the point zero one zero mark come from? Okay, that's from uh, the, the stock solution of the NA2 S203, bottom of page 129 in the table there. Oh, 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 right here. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so that's where I'm getting all of the stock solutions, right, from this table. And those were already made up for you. Okay. So then you take two milliliters of that, divide by 11 total milliliters for the dilution factor, and then the half is that weird substitution stuff from this page. And then the number you wind up with is here, and then what you are putting in, based on your experiments every time, is the number of seconds it took to get the color change. Then you'll have something that looks like the problem on the exam or the problem we've done in class. Okay? Okay, that's it for me. Anybody with questions?